40 years as a sports agent representing NFL stars like Troy Aikman and now Patrick Mahomes. What has been the secret to his success? And where does he think sports and business are headed? Lee Steinberg, super agent, joins us now on episode 50. Let's go. So excited about our guest here for episode 50, sports agent, philanthropist, author, chairman of Steinberg Sports and Entertainment. He is the one and only Lee Steinberg, and he joins us now. Lee, welcome. Thanks for doing this. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Uh, so here we are in the middle of football season, but uh, as a man who runs a company and a sports agency, I, I imagine it never stops for you. The, the grind is always there, season or off season. That's true, but this is a especially wonderful time because we just finished with baseball, but we have football, basketball, hockey, a cornucopia of sports all going at the same time. Now, you got your start as an agent in the NFL, 41-year career. You've you've blossomed now into baseball and basketball, boxing, Olympic sports, as you've mentioned. Um as as somebody who got into this four decades ago, and, and here you are, and as you, as you described your second chapter of life in in, in sports agent, um, did you ever think you'd get to this point to where it's at today? Sports and the amount of dollars we're talking about, and how much you know you have a factor in all of this. I really did because uh, back in 1975, which was 48 years ago, <laughs> um, I saw the potential with the growth of television and three stations morphed into 300, which meant more games on television, more uh, background shows, more content, more analysis, more highlights, um, and brand new stadia with uh, jumbo scoreboards and, and naming rights and fantasy sports and the growth of the the internet, it all built together so yeah. that the economics are exponentially more than they ever were. And probably the head of all of it is the growth of pro football and how 71 of the top 100 uh, Nielsen ranked shows last year were NFL football. So for the first time we have a sport that's not only the number one sport, but the number one form of televised entertainment. Well, why do you think the NFL has taken it to that level? Is it the way they've packaged it, the way they presented it to fans, and the way they continue to change and evolve when uh, things are happening in sports? They're the first ones to adopt instant replay or whatever it is on and off the field. It seems like the NFL is a, he a step ahead of all the other professional leagues. He grew up with television, so every innovation that came with television was first with the NFL. It's once a week, so it's the anticipation of the upcoming game and the celebration of the last one. It's got uh, contact and, and, and violence uh, to it. It's, um, um, it's got a big offseason, so you anticipate it coming up. It's the uniforms, it's the memorabilia, it's uh, the marketing, it's the birth of fantasy and, and gambling and the way it integrates with, with merchandise and, and marketing. It, it gave birth to all these ancillary uh, ways to do it. It's the quarterback and how this has become the new leading man in American uh, culture. And, um, you know, thank God early on, I knew it was the quarterback stupid. <laughs> and uh, uh, so it's our Patrick Mahomes or Tua Tongo by Loa. And uh, it was all those weekends where I had half the starting quarterbacks. And it's the way in which these athletes have learned to be role models. So we ask that each one of them retraces their roots and sets up a high school scholarship fund, a college give back, and then a charitable foundation where they are um, having the leading political figures, uh, economic leaders, and community leaders set up a program. So work done is just put the 200 single mother and their family into the first home 
they'll ever own by moving them in and making the down payment. How important was that for you when you first got into the business, Lee, and and re representing players and, and walking them through the process? And it's obviously evolved over the years in the draft and free agency. But how important has it been for you, the people you represent in your agency, to make sure they're doing things off the field and helping out? Um, our players have raised almost a billion dollars in wow. programs that make a difference in the quality of life off the field. My my dad raised me with two core values, treasure relationships, especially family, and make a positive difference in the world. So to have a practice that speaks for something positive where you can have Lennox Lewis, a heavyweight boxer, cut a public service announcement that says real men don't hit women. Mm -hmm. That can do trigger more behavioral change in rebellious adolescents than a thousand authority figures ever could. We're going to get into Concordia Sports Business MBA program, which you're an advisor for in just a minute, and how important it is to have that program for, for young people who are looking to, to get into the sports business world. Uh, but Lee, I, I want to ask you one about analytics, because I, I find it fascinating, because in my mind, I think as an agent, that's something analytics numbers um, is is something that's probably always been used going back to when you first started because you're propping up your player with the background, the data, uh, the evidence of why they should be compensated for what they are and get the contracts for what they should get. Uh, uh, but now in sports, it's used on the field. Uh, but analytics, I am I incorrect in saying that's probably something you guys have been using since the beginning? We've always used analytics to analyze a player's performance and create categories in which we highlight um, statistically um, mm -hmm. how well they've done in a whole series of categories and then use that to compare. We call it comparables to other players. And then by comparing them in statistical categories, uh, how many touchdown passes, what's their quarterback rating, um, what's their percentage of completions, um, um, and then compare that to other quarterbacks and then show where you're statistically superior, and then compare that to what their contracts are. So it's all comparables, and it helps teams figure out um, is a high school player a better bet to draft or are college players more successful when they come out? Should you wait out a pitcher and and make sure you get your full complement of swings. Are you better off uh, trying to steal a base or sitting uh, uh, at home play? Um, are, are, is a heavy pitcher more likely to have arm trouble than a lighter pitcher? In other words, there are ways to statistically look at this and figure it out. It doesn't replace human judgment, <clears throat> but it gives you a way to statistically look at uh, if it's a 3-2 count, do you run and try to steal a base then? What are the results of that? Uh, uh, is it 69% safe and 31% and out? And so it, it gives you a whole way of looking at that. If you orally rely on stats and don't factor in the human elements, you have a problem. But statistics, if I own a baseball or football team, I'd use them all the time. Are you surprised at, at how they've started using them and, and really dictating in baseball and football in particular, even the NBA now, we're talking about analytics of load management uh, of, you know, the body and the wear down and where they can project, you know, not playing on a back-to-back -back and where they can sit out here or limit minutes here. I mean, to, I think it's fascinating that- It's, that, it's science. Yeah. And you better know and understand it. Um, um, what happens if a player sleeps six hours a night? What are the results in the game the next day? What happens if you travel the night before as opposed to the day of? Yeah. What are the results? It's giving you a path to uh, understanding human behavior based on results. 
Lee Steinberg is with us, chairman of Steinberg Sports and Entertainment, 40 plus years as a sports agent. He's represented over 300 professional athletes, football, basketball, baseball, boxing, Olympic sports. He's represented 12 NFL Hall of Famers. He's had the number one overall pick in the NFL draft, a record eight times. And you're an advisor with Concordia University Irvine's Sports Business MBA program. Now here on the Masters in Coaching podcast, we focus on the master's program in coaching and athletics administration. But this year, the Sports Business MBA program launched and you kind of helped put it together. I know you're advising it as well. Uh, why is it important to have an MBA specifically for, for sports business, Lee? Well, first of all, this is the only MBA program like this in Southern California. And Los Angeles is really the mecca of pro sports in many ways and a gateway internationally. So this is a a critical place to be. And, and what they do is they produce a whole lot of sports professionals with ethics and values. So that's uh, a, a really a, important thing to do. And they combine um, academics with experiential so that while they're getting classroom education, they're also out on a variety of different scenes with internships and and uh, actually getting day-to-day -day experience. So this is a very unique uh, program. Uh, Professor Mark Francis, who's a, a long friend of mine, is a yeah. superb uh, lecturer and, and teacher. And you have to look at the quality of the students that they turn out. They're fabulous additions to, to and, and are going to make a big impact uh, in the world of sports. So you go to Concordia, you get the masters, they have a network of people that can help you succeed professionally. And they've really refined the way in which they teach and the skill set to make sure that you're a major success in sports business. The two words you mentioned, ethics and values, I, I think really dive deep into this because uh, of, of being in sports business and they're talking about the amount of dollars that you are talking about um, and having that ethics, having the values with your clients, with relationships in sports business, with teams, other executives is a huge thing because your 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 name is what you have as a sports agent or somebody in sports business. And if you carry the Concordia um, diploma and you carry their masters. It's like the good housekeeping seal of approval. <laughs> if people know out there in the world of sports and business what they're getting, what they're getting is a well-trained professional that will carry on with the highest ethics and the highest values. Lee, you mentioned for you, it's sort of a second chapter in, in this industry. You were the, the, at the top of the game. Um, I mean, you, you left it. You come back in, and now you're back at it. You mentioned Patrick Mahomes and Tua, two of your big clients in the NFL. The second go-around for you, Lee, um, going into it, what, what did you want to do differently when the second time around from the first time? Well, I think there's a challenge in can we get athletes to perform in critical situations at a higher level of productivity? And so we've been exploring um, things like hyperbaric oxygen, light stem, um, uh, brain enhancers yeah. like uh, RTMS and Nestory with Tommy Shavers and brain training. There are biomed breakthroughs that are going to revolutionize the amount of energy, stamina, recovery from injury that uh, people get that I think are really important to take into pro sports and collegiate sports. And then for the rest of us, enhance the amount of time we live and the clarity of our uh, cognitive thinking over time. So that, starting on another book, I'm starting on a podcast. Um, we've got, uh, as I said, an agent academy that we're doing in Las Vegas next week. Awesome. We're teaching the next generation, just like Concordia is doing you know, how with a specific skill set, how to negotiate, how to um, uh, recruit, how to set up charitable foundations, and uh, just trying to make a positive difference in the world. What, what, 
what have you noticed in 2022 compared to 10 years ago, compared to 25 years ago about the business? I'll just stay in being in sports agency and um... social media. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the, the, uh, the whole way in which information is communicated um, and the currency in this market is now how many followers you have on TikTok, how many <laughs> followers you have on Instagram and yeah. Facebook and um, uh, and we now have NILs, which uh, have revolutionized on the college campus. Um, the fact that no longer amateurism, but and and younger and younger, and now you have uh, alumni collectives that are raising money through their businesses, mm -hmm. and they can offer them in recruiting and the. Uh, players who are doing this are getting younger and younger through high school and younger. Uh, Hogue Hospital is over here. Pretty soon, you'll have agents uh, going to maternity wards looking for healthy mothers to market, you know. And uh, you have NFTs, which are uh, uh, little pieces of memorabilia, which are sold, but you only own it on the... Yeah, I don't get those. <laughs> you only own it on the computer. <laughs> So it's just a, a explosion of, uh, of a variety of, of different uh, forms. But, um, you know, athletes still can be role models and they still can trigger imitative behavior. So we can target bullying, uh, sex trafficking, domestic violence, all sorts of problems, racism, um, the environment uh, through athletes standing up and making a difference. Well, I wanted to ask you about NIL. You, you mentioned it, Lee, and you know you, you talked about how it's getting younger and younger here in Southern California, hotbed for high school football. You've, you've got quarterbacks who are signed to go play for a team in the SEC, and he's already got an NIL deal for multi-million dollars uh, before he's even stepped foot on that campus and just finishing his senior year of high school football this fall. It, it, is this a good path we're going down? I mean, I'm all in favor of the college athletes being compensated, and that that that's that's fair. But I mean, it feels like we're kind of in the wild, wild west here with figuring out NIL from the college even to the high school level, where kids are getting paid millions of dollars and they're 17 years old. The problem is the NCAA could have forestalled this, but they waited too long, and you had college students on the campus from impoverished backgrounds, sending some of their money home to their parents. And they were living at a lower standard of living than their non-athletic peers. You could have solved this by giving them $5,000 more in, in a stipend, but they didn't do it and they didn't do it. And California, a couple of years ago, passed SB 206 that said this was gonna happen for California athletes. They gave it a start date of 2023 because they knew that other states would, would freak out when they saw that California was gonna do it. And all of a sudden um, they pressured the NCAA in July of 2021 to pass this rule. It's only been a year plus three or four months, mm. but when you saw Nick Saban speak about Bryce Young from modern day and say he had a million dollars in signed deals, Nick Saban, who would always underplay how a young quarterback would do, Bryce had never played a down. Yeah. And Nick Saban, the most conservative coach in the country, was broadcasting the fact he had a million dollars in deals. It was recruiting. He yeah. was saying, come to Alabama and you can get a million dollars in deals. So that set it off. And now it took them a couple months to realize they could use this in recruiting. And now it's not only being used to compensate athletes, it's for that. No one thought it would be as broad as it's turned out, where Phil Knight would give yeah. stipends to every player, men and women at Oregon, where Jack in the Box would give 15 stipends to athletes with the first name Jack, where, um, he, you know, Colorado would give women's athletes. It, it's just, um, and think about it. If you're in Alabama, the 
20th player on the Alabama football squad is still a celebrity. So it's spread out all over the place. And that horse has left the barn yeah. uh, and it's not going back in. That is for sure. Lee, you look great. Um, I, I know you, you're you're feeling great. You're you're off and running again in your second chapter here and uh, dominating uh, the sports entertainment. And uh, we appreciate you coming on the podcast. Um, thank you so much for advising the uh, master's program, the sports business program at Concordia. Uh, it's in its infancy here in its first year. Uh, it's off and running, though. Great things are happening, and we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Master's and Coaching Podcast. You want that Concordia diploma on your wall, and your life will be a success.